Hey what's going on guys Tanmay of Simple Snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on multithreading in Java programming so we've been covering multithreading since the past 3 or 4 video tutorials and today we're going to be taking a look at the thread sleep method in multithreading and it's going to be a short topic we are not going to be discussing a lot because it's not a very huge topic we'll just take a look at the online article that we have on our website and then we'll jump to the netbeans id and perform the sleep method practically so with that being said let's start off with today's topic quickly open up this article if you want to just view through it or you can just listen through this video you don't have to actually open this article this is on our official website i'll drop the link of this article in the video description so today we are going to be talking about the thread sleep method in java programming so before we get into this topic let's say you have two threads which are simultaneously running and you want one of the thread to be paused for some amount of time so that the other thread performs some prerequisites or pre-required activities before the second thread starts again working so let's say one thread is going to be opening a file and the thread number 2 is going to be writing something to the file so when you concurrently start both the threads you want the second thread to wait for some time right so that the first thread actually opens up the file and then the thread 2 will start writing to that file right so it has to happen in that order only that thread 1 first opens that file and thread 2 then writes to it so what can you do in order to make that thread wait for some time or stop for some time so that's where this sleep method comes into picture and what it does is it causes the concurrently executing thread to sleep for specified number of milliseconds so this is how the method looks like let me just zoom in so this is the signature of the method so basically public static void sleep and it takes long parameter which is in milliseconds okay so you have to pass the number of milliseconds for which you want to make the thread sleep now if you see in the very first multi threading video wherein we discussed the entire thread life cycle let me just go to that article so yeah i have already opened this article if you want i'll drop the link so there was this block state that we discussed about right so this is that state that will be arrived after we call the sleep method so the thread will go into a blocked or wait or sleep state for that number of milliseconds which we pass in the parameters okay so this is where that sleep method achieves that wait state or non runnable state so the parameters the return value and you can just read out through this article but what we will do is we'll directly jump to the netbeans id and execute a program and we already have one program so you can also run this but let's test it out in practical so quickly open up your netbeans id okay so as you can see i have already opened up my netbeans id i'm just going to create a class multi thread demo and i'm going to perform inheritance i'm going to say extends thread class okay i forgot to type class over here yeah and then i'm going to override the run method so i'm going to say public void run in opening and closing brackets now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to print out the thread id over here and then i'm going to call the sleep method as well so our motive here is to just understand the sleep method and to see how the output is changed because of the sleep method okay so in the for loop i'm going to say int i equals to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus and then i'm going to say system dot out dot print ln thread id i'm going to say current thread dot get id so this current thread and get id are inbuilt methods which come along with the thread class which we can use to actually get the current thread which is running and then the id of that current thread so we can concatenate two methods side by side de depending on whether they are compatible with each other or not so this current thread will give us the instance of the current thread which is running and then the get id will be called for that current thread which will give us the current id of that current thread okay so that's why we can use them in this fashion that is in concatenation mode so yeah after this what i'm going to do is i'm going to say sleep and i'm going to say 2000 and now you can see that i'm getting an error but this is basically not an error this is saying that there is a unreported exception which can happen so it must be caught or declared or be thrown so if you hit on this bulb over here you can say surround statement with try catch so that's what i'm going to do and then the try catch will be automatically generated you can see try catch and then some message is also printed if you want you can just comment this out it's not necessary so this 2000 is 2000 milliseconds which means that we are going to be pausing the thread for 2 seconds so 2000 milliseconds would be equal to 2 seconds and now that's about it we are just going to be creating an object of multi thread demo in the main method so these two packages and classes are by default included because 
we are using this statement so i can actually remove them we don't actually need them anyways in the main method now what we'll do is we'll just create an object of multi thread demo t1 is equal to new multi thread demo so this is our thread number 1 and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create one more thread saying t2 and then i'm going to say t1 dot start and t2 dot start okay so now let's see what the output looks like so i'm just going to run this and there you go you can see the output running slowly so you can see 10 and 11 being printed again 10 and 11 being printed 10 and 11 being printed after 2 to seconds this is happening so that's why the output is coming slowly so you saw that right now if i increase the amount of time being paused i can say 3 and if i save this and run this again then it will still take a lot of time you can see 11 and 10 again 11 and 10 so again this is happening for 5 times right we are running the for loop for 5 times and this is happening for both the threads thread id 11 and thread id 10 so you can see the output is still coming out. So yeah, this was it and this is how the sleep method can be used. And it is specifically used when you want to pause a particular thread before some event is happened or before some event is going to happen. And then this gives you control over your thread so that you do not get into some errors or exception kind of situations. So yeah, that's it for this video guys. You can check out the article on the website and you can try out this example. You can try out your own example. Try to create more than two threads. Try to experiment with the sleep method. You can also pass nanoseconds I suppose as a second parameter but we've not done that. And yeah that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood the concept of how to perform the sleep method in multi-threading and that's how you achieve that non-runnable or wait state for a thread. And if you like this video please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was and please share it with your friends too. Thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.